We have now reached to the 20th tradition from 110 lessons for life from the commander of the faithful. May God's peace and blessings be upon him. And today our topic based on his beautiful hadith is on servitude and freedom, on true servitude and true freedom and slavery. And what does Islam expect from the believers on these two extremes of freedom and of slavery. Now we know when we look at humanity, whether we look at the societal life of individuals within a society or indeed even countries that are interacting with one another or even organizations and their interaction with countries, we see that there are multiple ways that they can coexist with one another and, and this is what we want to look at in the tradition today. Let us first look at the words of the Commander of the Faithful and then reflect on his statement and what the interpretation of this hadith is. So the Imam tells us the following in this hadith. He says, Do good to anyone whom you wish so that you become their superior, and depend on anyone whom you wish so that you become their captive, and be autonomous from anyone you wish so that you become their peer. What does this hadith mean and how do we implement and apply it within our day-to-day -day lives? Well, we see that, generally speaking, again, on a, on, a, on, a, on a level of countries, let's say, when one country is dependent on another country, let's say for import and export, if there's ever a trade imbalance between the two countries, when one country is exporting more to another country and the other country is importing more than they're able to export to another country, in a way they have become uh, slaves or subservient of that other country because they now have to rely upon them. But when the tables are turned and now they're able to export even more than they need to import, when they are able to produce more domestically and export that, have enough for their own citizenry and they're able to export it to other countries, then you see that they now have the upper hand. Now they're in the position to make the rules and to dictate terms and conditions. But if you see that they're at an equal level, so their import and export are balanced, they're giving to other countries as much as they're taking in, then they're at a level of being peers, that it is difficult for either side to actually dictate terms and conditions of many aspects of their lives, not just their trade, but many other aspects that countries uh, usually go through in terms of their interactions and their relationships. And perhaps it's for this reason that we see this tradition from the commander of the faithful. And when we reflect on other Islamic teachings, that as Muslims we have been uh, dissuaded, we are not encouraged to go and borrow from people. We're not, uh, it, it isn't liked within Islam to take a loan, to uh, borrow from other individuals. Not that it's forbidden, but this is something which is not encouraged. It's discouraged within the religion. Because when you go and you borrow from somebody, Again, you're putting yourselves into a position of quote-unquote slavery. You are now indebted to that individual. And conversely, they are now uh, above you in a sense because now they have one up over you and you need to pay them back. But when you're at an equal level where you need to ne neither need to borrow or to give to other people, then everybody is at a, at a same level of their level of their methodology of interaction with one another. This can again be at an at a individual level of two people, it can be at the level of uh, uh, two countries for example, or even different organizations. For example, you have organizations in the world who lend money to countries who are in need. And then you will see that when they lend a country billions of dollars to get out of their financial woes and, their cha and the economic challenges that the countries are facing, as we see in the world today, now that organization has the ability to mandate how that country and the government changes and what can happen to the people. So now that organization is dictating the, uh, the, the way that the people will need to lead their lives. So that is not a level of equality, it is a uh, a level of the organization who is lending money at a superior level and the country who need the money to come out of their economic troubles to be at a lower level and they are now subservient to the rules of this particular organization and or the donor countries. 
We close this discussion on this particular hadith and we look at this one final point that we get gathered from this particular tradition, which is that as the commander of the faithful, Imam Ali, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, tells us in this tradition that this level of uh, superiority and inferiority, of being in a position of need and want, of being in a person who is fortunate and unfortunate, this is not just by chance. It doesn't just happen, you know, um, in a vacuum. But rather, these are real, very real um, outcomes that happen because of our own choices in life. Again, whether it be at the level of an individual who, let's say, has to go and take a loan and borrow money, whether it be from another fellow believer or from a bank or from another public lending institution, or whether it be at the level of a country, as we see again in the world today, many countries are having to practice this austerity and have to borrow money from the International Monetary Fund and maybe other countries to maintain their, uh, maintain their country. That all of these things are through our own actions, through our own way that we have carried ourselves, again as individuals, as, as organizations, or ultimately as countries, and that these are very real challenges and problems that we see. That when somebody is in a position to help somebody else, they now take on that role of being their superior. And obviously those who are receiving the help are now at a very, at an inferior level. And now they are again answerable to the people who have helped them out. But had they maintained their, let's say, economic uh, fiscal policy properly, had they spent within their limits, had they invested where they should have invested and, and cut expenses when they should have cut and, and had balanced budgets, again for individuals or companies or countries, then they would be at an equal footing with other nations around the world. One country could not dictate policies and, and governmental changes to that, other, uh, to that other country or to an individual. But because they have that imbalance that they have put themselves into because of bad choices of their government, because of uh, policies which the government enacted, which, uh, which really got them into the quagmire that they're in, we see that now they are at that imbalance. And so we close and conclude this particular tradition and we remind ourselves that if we want to be considered to be equals and peers with those around us, again at, a, at, a, at an individual or collective level, we need to be able to be in a position of our own strength that we are not looking for a handout or support from another individual but yet that we can take care of ourselves as a Muslim community, as Muslim countries, as a global Muslim Ummah. And then and only then will we be able to actually dictate and change policy around the world for the betterment of us and for the betterment of all those who live on this earth. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.